Hello and uh, welcome back to another episode of Fluke Friday where I present every time a different series and I'm slowly going up in the numbers and this time we are in the 80 series. Little disclaimer, this video is not sponsored by Fluke. These and these items are not original but I made this for the purpose of this video because I'm a fan and of course because of the copyright it will not be for sale. So the 80 series it is probably one of their best selling series, especially the, the 87 and uh, I think they are now in the 87 generation 5. But uh, if we look at the 80 series, you have the 83, the 85 and the 87 and they all look the same, only they have a little bit uh, differences and the 87 being the one with the most options and you can switch them over from 4000 counts to 20,000 counts. So that is really great. So the introduction of the first generation was about 96, 97. And uh, generation 3 was in 2002. And the generation 5 in 2004. And it's still selling. And uh, the funny thing is, if we look at the specification, I will put the list uh, down below. Um, well, the 87, you have the 4,000 and the 20,000 count, so that is the highest model. Yeah, the thing that is a little bit strange in this series, because it goes slowly up and then you have better specifications, except in the series uh, 3, that the 83 has a better AC. And they did the same here. Here, 0 0.5, 0 0.7. But all the others are better except for the AC, so that's a little bit strange. I'm pretty sure you already have seen an 87 before because it's being so uh, popular. So I like to focus on, an, uh, on another one and that is the 787 and that is a process calibrator. If you are very interested in the 87, I have uh, a video where I put the 87, generation 3 and the generation 5 together with the two also popular Brayman's, the 857 and the 869. And I put them side by side, so I will put the link down below also. So a quick look of both the meters, the 87 generation 3 and the 787 generation 1. Um, yeah, the 787, it's the 700 series, are all process uh, calibrators and that means that it has a current source and it came at a cost because uh, this one doesn't have a capacitance this one does have it also the 20,000 counts that you have here by default it is 4,000 counts and by pushing the button it restarts and then you get the 20,000 counts and uh, that is missing on uh, this one They probably needed to make space for other things. What does that extra digit do? Well, I have my other process calibrator. It's the 1.1 volt. Here they are now both the same in this mode. But here I can go to the extra digit. And then look at this. This is very nice from the series 3. So the 787 process calibrator, I'm already heat heating up the sick land, so uh, let's play a bit. Well, at the first glance, and we already hit the little glance, it looks exactly like a normal multimeter. The only thing is here, in this current, we also have an output, 0 to 24 milliamps, and it can be a current source, and there is here a simulate and I think the simulate is not probably it's kind of an electronic load but then also up to 24 milliamps so that is not too much and we are going to play with the source as a current source and then we have some extra options um, here when we switch it to the output then we have a flat line so it, we can set it to a specific current and then it stays there. Or we have some pre-programmed, here is sort of a ramp and, uh, and a multi-ramp and some sort of a stair. So okay, I've set it already in a fixed scale to 20 milliamps because I want to play a little bit. 
Here we have. Can you read the digits? Yes, I think we put it to current right here. And of course, we need to do this. Okay. So, output is to zero. Well, it's almost zero. Let's put a little bit. 0 0.1 milliamp. Let's just, and we have fine steps. But just go to one, one milliamp. Well, it uh, almost agrees. When it when it switches on a little bit longer, it will agree a lot more. It just drops a little bit the first uh, few minutes. So it's actually now in current source mode. Milliamps. Three. Okay, that is all nice. What about the other options? If I am now here it's kind of doing uh, slowly going up, slowly going down. And if I put my histogram, yeah, I need a trend charge. So I'm doing that, and here you can see a lot better what it is uh, doing. Here we can see what it is doing. It is doing slowly up and down, up and down. This is not the middle. This is not the zero. This is just uh, 10 milliamps. So it stays positive. And then it goes from zero to 20, up and down and up and down. And we have a second option that it goes just a little bit faster. So here we can see it's doing exactly the same, only just a little bit faster. And then here we have, it looks like a stairs. It is probably also exactly the same, but then just uh, slower. Ah, it's doing steps now. Steps of five. So in the end, it is actually sort of a very expensive uh, way of the LBO2 that I usually use. And, uh, and this one can also do voltage because in these uh, industrial environments, if you have sensors, they usually work between uh, 0 and 10 volts or uh, 0 to 20 milliamps. And uh, current, uh, I would think, uh, is nowadays the most used because I also don't see a voltage output on the 787. And this LBO2 does have that. Uh, why Fluke decided not to have the voltage output, I don't know, because you are missing now the, the 0 to 10 volts, but it only has a 9 volt battery. So maybe it would drain too much or they would need too many tricks or it is just not used anymore that much because uh, current, of course, you have the current flowing. So it doesn't matter too much if you have a little resistance in your wires or you have a voltage drop because the current source just provides the currents that it needed. And with the voltage, of course, if you have zero to 10 volts and you have a little bit of voltage drop because of the resistance of your wires to your sensors or between the devices, then of course you have a different in your reading. So current would probably the, be the best option. Well, I like to see what is inside. So uh, let's open it. Switch this off. And well, I bought it second hand because new, they are very expensive. And uh, well, it doesn't look that nice. It needs cleaning. And let's see how much is the difference between these two. 
Well, <laughs> I love the love the love the thing. Well, from this side, there is not much of a difference. Only thing is, is that the eight, the seven eight seven, is super dirty. But uh, I haven't cleaned it yet, so I want to do that. Um, yeah. Also, this is a generation three. This is a generation one. So that could also be a, a difference. But uh, they look a lot alike. Here are some more adjustments than here, but uh, yeah, probably it's for the capacitance. This probably has a little oscillator, and here we don't have that, but this should be the current source somewhere. Let's see the other side. Let's see if we can just take that out. Okay, we need to do a little bit more unscrewing, it seems. It almost seems that with the 787, it's almost generation 3. Okay, now they're completely open. This one is from 1907. It says this one doesn't say a year, but it is a revision E. Um, well, the two chips here, a lot of more ICs here. And then, yeah, it's different board completely. And here we have an extra switch on the bottom. Well, we here don't have that. And here, that is probably the generator because it's an analog device. I'm expecting, but I'm just guessing that, uh, that this is the current generator because it's from analog devices and they usually have all these generator chips. And this is the AD7714AR. So, uh, I made a little mistake when opening. The plastic is already a little bit old and I broke off these little hooks that that's needs to yeah here i have a good one there are little hooks in that uh, that hold on the pcb and that is to push the zebras and i'm a little bit afraid that then i put it back together because the hooks are missing here well i have still one here but it is, and this one is already broken, it's loose. And here I don't have it all. So I need something to push the display. So, but I will just put it together and maybe I can put something on the back of the PCB and then maybe that pushes then the display. Because I can, I have no space to put uh, glue, um, not space for screws. So, uh, yeah, I need to look how I do that.
Okay, I put it back together, but still the display, the seabrass is a problem. And well, let me just show you what the problem is. And I will add the battery. Now, if I switch it on now, the display doesn't work. So I need to push on the back here, and then it makes contact. So that is what I think I'm going to do. Switch it off. So I think I need something to push. I have here some double sided. So I will put some strips on the back. So it will push there. So if I put it about here. And not to close the buzzer. Hopefully this is exactly enough. When we close. Okay, I managed to uh, clean them. This one is now almost new. Of course, I polished the display again. And this one looked terrible and dirty and I also was able to clean it, but I just clean it in the sink with this white sanding stuff that you use in your bathroom. And then uh, the rubber is back to its original color almost. So. And the display has no problem. So pushing it from the back was a solution. And uh, that seems to work fine. So the 787 is almost back to new and uh, I realized I, they, it also came with a probe set and the probe set is actually pretty cool. It is super flexible. I think it's yeah, it's two meters of wire. That is great. It is all with the security plugs, but you can also just remove and then you have a normal security banana and you can add even an extension like this and like this and then you have a huge probe so then you will well you're more than two meters so that is pretty cool and the same for the black one and the black one has something extra because you use it mostly for ground you can also remove and then you have a normal banana so you can just plug it in in the meter and also we have a black extension look at that so if you need to probe very far you can that was the 80 series well mostly it was the 787 but uh, the 80 series you probably know very good uh, next time we're gonna go to the 90 and that means the scope meters thank you for watching and i hope to see you next time